Hi guys, it's Dr. Ron Miller here with CashBasedPhysiotherapy.org and today we're going over what can we learn from collecting baseball cards as kids. So when I was a kid, I loved collecting baseball cards and <clears throat> I would have my favorite players and I'd do whatever it takes. I'd try to collect all of their cards until everyone tried to create 15 different types of cards for the major brands. So anyway, it got carried away. But back in like the 80s and 90s, you know, I loved Frank Thomas. I collect all Frank Thomas cards. I love Cal Ripken Jr. and I try to collect all of their cards. And my brother loved Jose Canseco. And at the time, all these cards were worth a lot of money. You could look up the Frank Thomas um, Leaf rookie card, I forget what it was, it was like $60. Or the Cal Ripken rookie card was worth $80. You go get this Beckett and the Jose Canseco card was worth $100. But there's two interesting things here, is that, you know, is it really worth $100? Is it really worth $65? If you go to sell that card, but no one wants to buy it, is it really worth that much? Or what happens whenever the stock goes down and Jose Canseco isn't a stud anymore and, you know, the, the cost of that car or the value of that card just goes way down and no one wants to buy it. But the point is here that, you know, you have to remove your own biased opinions. And yes, we think that physical therapy is the best. We should be the musculoskeletal experts. We feel our treatment approach works. We show long-term and short-term uh, outcomes. Yes, we, the physical therapists, see it like this. But what does the public see in us? What does insurance companies see in this? You know, when we're opening a business, whether it's standard or insurance based you have to see outside of your own bias and see you know what value do others see of your services so if you are you know if you're charging 150 an hour but the public doesn't see the value in your service they're not going to you know, they're not be willing to pay 150 dollars an hour you know it's kind of going back to that baseball baseball card example i'm collecting all these cards that i think are worth hundreds of dollars but if no one's willing no one likes that card or sees value in that card no one's going to pay me a hundred dollars for that card so it really doesn't matter what i think of it it's really about what others think of it and when you're in you know whether if if you're in a standard insurance based clinic and someone's deductible is five thousand dollars or their co pays seventy five and you're asking them to pay cash rate, if they don't see the value in your service and your treatment, they're not gonna pay the seventy five dollars. It's not about what we think, it's about what is best for the patient and how the public sees the value in our service. So if you're in a cash based clinic and you're only seeing cash patients, if your value um, is not <laughs> If the patient or the prospective patient or the public doesn't see the value in your service, they're not going to pay you cash. So you have to create value in other people's eyes, not your own. And to take it even a step farther is, you know, those who are taking my, my uh, cash-based physical therapy courses and you're opening a cash-based clinic, my question for you is, if someone wanted to buy your practice, how much is your business worth and would anyone be willing to buy it? Okay, start thinking about that a little bit, you know, because you have to do what's best for yourself, your family, your assets, you know, for like a long-term outcome. Now, if you're the only practitioner in your cash-based clinic and something happens to you and you can't practice, there goes the business. So no one's going to invest in Ron Miller Physical Therapy if Ron Miller can't do the treatment or is not there or is not a part of the team. So you have to start thinking about this, you know, how much is your business worth? And is someone else seeing any value in your business that is worth them buying your business from you? You know, and this is where you have to start thinking of, okay, wow, how can I develop more assets in my business to increase the value that maybe if an investor or a big company would come in and buy out my business that I would increase the value enough that other people would actually want to buy your practice. Yeah, that's a possibility still. So you have to start thinking about that. And, you know, whether it's seeing patients one on one, whether it's attracting patients, asking them to pay cash, or whether it's creating real value in your business, 
and creating real value in other people's eyes that warrants them to buy your business from you, to pay you $150 for an eval, or to pay $100 for your treatment, or to pay $150 for my Frank Thomas rookie card. So that's the main point of what we can learn from collecting baseball cards. Don't make the same mistake that I did. I collect all the same players, my favorite players, and nowadays, you know, it's not worth as much compared to back then. So buying and selling high and low, that's a, wholly, that's a totally different discussion here. But the point is what I wanted to make is, you know, whether you're an insurance-based clinic, whether you're a cash-based clinic, or whether you're a cash-based practice opening up a business, you have to think about it. How can you create true value in other people's eyes? And then from there, keep doing it, and then you'll be able to get the money or the amount of money coming in in exchange for the value of your service. And it's not about what we think as physical therapists, it's about what others think. So that's my main point today. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment box below. Please share this on your social medias. And uh, if you have any other questions, you can visit me at cashbasedphysicaltherapy.org, and I'll see you soon. <music>